You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion. Delivered by conflicting media reports, we connect the dots, you know, the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me within every market. There are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest. Welcome back. Welcome back, Todd Halterman. How are you, my friend? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing amazing. You know, I pulled up Welcome Back Cotter on YouTube and watched an episode just to have a fun evening last night. <laughs> nice. Josh, have you uh, have you gone and looked at one of those yet? I know you didn't. It wasn't around when... Okay, so you've seen it now, so... so you know, I, I gotta, I gotta bring that up for my kids and let them see that. They, they, they might have uh, Mitchell, my, my, my youngest is still watching. I think he's seen every two and a half man episode uh, at least a dozen times. So he, he, I think he knows everything that's going to happen there. Of course, doesn't everybody? But hey, let me remind you: if you ever have any more finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly: 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsigleradio.com. What are we going to celebrate today? I think uh, there's a lot. Of National Parents as Teachers Day. Okay. National STEM Day. Maybe we'll get back to that eventually. Radiography Day. Uh, let's get more exciting because it is hump day. Today's uh, National Cappuccino Day. Where do you get a good cappuccino? It's a nice little place right on Lido Island. I never remember the name of it, but boy, does my car know how to get there. Yeah, I like to go to that one. And today's also National Harvey Wallbanger Day. I haven't seen Harvey Wallbangers in, boy, it's been a long, long time. I don't even remember how you make a Harvey Wallbanger. Back in the 70s or 80s, I think, that was a big drink. Vodka, Galliano, and orange juice. Okay. So Harvey Wallbanger Day, you know, do you have the Wallbanger first or do you have the cappuccino first? I guess it depends on what time of day it is, right? I mean, I don't think we're going to start with Harvey Wallbangers as we record this morning, 9 o'clock here on the West Coast. But hey, let's take a look and see what the markets are doing today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 98 points. The S&P 500 is down 11. NASDAQ down 42. Oil is down $1.87 a barrel. That's a... Uh, a good one right there. Glad to see that oil's down a little bit. Of course, the reason for oil being down is not good. The reason is there's not a, not a lot of demand because people are starting to feel the effects of what's going on in the marketplace. Don't tell the president that there's a challenge out here. If he was awake, though, he might be filling the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. But I don't know if he's awake. Down $1.82 a barrel right now. So that's uh, that's just watching what the, what's going on there. Uh, watching also the, the news. You know, I'd love somebody to tell me. And I don't know what news you watch. Do you watch any news? I know I, I've been hearing more and more that young people get all their news from TikTok. Now, I don't know. I, I have a TikTok. I don't go on there very often. But I don't see any news on there. Nothing at least that I would pay any attention to. But I hear that's where a lot of young folks are getting their news. I want to know wherever you get your news. Is Are you seeing in the news where Iran and their um, minion have launched 40 attacks on U.S. military and military bases since the 17th of October? I, You know, I watched uh, the local news last night. I watched the local news this morning. And not once did I see anything about that. And we're in Veterans Weeks, and we got this going on, and they're not even talking about it. Now, I don't know. I, I watch those same news stations, and none of them have learned from Ron Siegel Radio. I don't know why. But 
all week we're celebrating our military men and women veterans as we lead into Veterans Day. So we're going to be talking about that. Todd Halterman is a veteran, so we're we're happy to have him and appreciate his service. But all week, I wonder why they don't do that more on some of the local stations. We're hearing about all this other craziness. Now, we did get a lot of election results yesterday. And fascinating watching that go by as well because the commentary – is that the Democrats are winning all these elections. Well, maybe it's because they're midterm elections and they're the only ones that are showing up for them. Because one of the things I think, and I could be all wet, I I follow mortgages more than politics, but what seems to be the case to me is the vast majority of races that have any kind of uh, enthusiasm are where the states are actually taking their authority and dealing with abortion rights. Just throw that out there. Regardless, I'm not going to getting into whether you like abortion or don't like abortion. My opinion has always been the same thing. I want the people to decide. This is a free country. And the people is not those nine people on the Supreme Court. So you're starting to see this going on all over the country. Now, Ohio, did they make a strategic error? Because they came out and settled their decision on abortion rights in the election yesterday. That means what are the Democrats going to talk about when it comes to the 2024 elections? They're not going to have anything to say. They're not going to have anything to to rally the troops around. So it'll be fascinating to see what happens there. Ah, Just watching all these things, I I, I find some of them intriguing. Some of them are just a, a straight old waste of time. But we continue watching. Let's see what else is going on in the world that you need to know about today. So we talked about that. The, the uh, uh, Federal Reserve, got a lot of Federal Reserve individuals out there yapping right now. So we should see some volatility in the markets. Interesting that Jerome Powell came out and said that he basically doesn't know what the heck he's doing. It was one of his speeches this morning where he came out and, and said that, you know, it's always, everything's always new when you're dealing with the Federal, with the, uh, with the, up the open market. Well, it's, if it's always new, does that mean that he doesn't know what's been going on for the last 10, 20, 30 years? Maybe, Mr. Powell, we can help you out with that. Maybe we can tell you what the history is of the Federal Reserve overreacting every single time. But we'll talk more about that in the Mortgage Minute. What else do we have going on in the world? Uh, a lot of battles right now. Obviously, the U.S. What's going on here? U.S. supporting terrorists. I'm sorry, 46% of the Democrat Party supporting Hamas and the Palestinians. Can't figure that one out myself either, but I don't know. Maybe Leon Cooperman, maybe he has an idea here. Big, big donor to Columbia University, $50 million, says no more, no mas. Not going to give any more money because Those kids don't have any clue what's going on. They haven't got an education up until this point. Not going to give them any more money. Fascinating. Chinese President Xi Jinping is going to be the guest of honor at a dinner with top U.S. business executives in San Francisco. He doesn't go to Washington, D.C. to see President Biden, but yes, he will go to San Francisco. So just throwing that out there. Ooh, we got an interesting, uh, only for Todd Halterman. We got the bride on here today. She would, doesn't doesn't listen to the show very often, but must be because of you being on the show, Todd. I'm just guessing that you're listening. Well, hey, you can't help her for having good taste. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Okay. Now, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, we're going to chat with Todd Halterman. Where are the stock, where's the stock market going? I think Todd has a crystal ball, and he's going to tell us exactly what's going to happen and when. His compliance people aren't listening, so we can say that. We're going to also talk about uh, thinking about using your 401k to buy a home. We'll see about that one. How a teenager can start to establish credit history. All that and more. Reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990-800-306-1990 or ronsingerradio.com. Facebook.com forward slash ronsingerradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage. 
connection. Homeowners over the age of 62 are taking back financial control after retirement with reverse mortgages, and the Siegel Lending Team is here to help you use it to your advantage. Call Ron Siegel with Geneva Financial to receive your free information booklet with no obligation. The booklet answers all your questions, and the best part is you still own your home. Call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990 or visit ronsiegelradio.com. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you like many of your neighbors trying to figure out how to pay off your debts so you could retire someday? Build bigger savings. Invest in opportunities. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Debt will destroy 50% of Americans from being able to retire earlier and with more. What if you could have a guaranteed program that could show you how to eliminate all of your debt in 10 years or less, all without having to spend more each month than you spend right now? Yes, that's correct. All without spending more from your checkbook each month than you are today. Get your free analysis today to see if you qualify. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Log on today for your free analysis, rsrnodebt.com. No purchase necessary. The free analysis takes only two minutes, rsrnodebt.com. Ron Siegel Radio is your home and mortgage connection. Go to rsrnodebt.com, rsrnodebt.com. Are you a renter and tired of making monthly payments? Paying off someone else's mortgage? Hey, it's Ron Siegel here to help you stop renting and start owning your dream home with amazing low interest rates. And you can potentially qualify for a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket. So stop renting. Start owning with Ron Siegel. Learn more at ronsiegelradio.com and start owning today. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California. Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990, the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Have you heard about Geneva's Home Select program? It might be the last mortgage you ever need. Think about this. Pay off your mortgage in probably half the time. Don't make a traditional mortgage payment and have access to your equity. What more could you ask for? That is the Home Select program at Geneva. You can go to rsrhomeselect.com, rsrhomeselect.com, and see about that one. And every day at this time, OBMMI, they provide the most comprehensive, accurate, timely, and interactive analysis of pricing ever conducted in the mortgage industry, calculated from actual lock rates. They don't tell us points paid, points received, or APR. They tell us the locked rates with consumers across 
of all mortgage transactions nationwide. 30-year conforming loans down a little bit, 7.452. 30-year jumbo loans up, 7.732. 30-year FHA loans up, 7.28. 30-year USDA loans. Rural areas generally don't have no down payment down 7.377 in the best loan on the market for those that earned it. It was up a little bit yesterday, 7.174. And if you want our market commentary every morning, we put it out as early as we can get to it. RSRmarketminute.com. RSRmarketminute.com sends it out to hundreds of folks every morning. RSRmarketminute.com. Free to you. Let's see what's going on in the markets this morning. S&P 500 is now down 13.72. 10-year Treasury is down four basis points. We'll see what happens at the auction later today. Mortgage-backed securities are up six basis points, which means interest rates are down a little bit. And why is that happening? Why, you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's basically doing absolutely nothing. It's telling you that we're just waiting on seeing what's going to happen with inflation. We are seeing oil prices are continuing to move lower, now breaking beneath 77 a barrel. This is going to help us on inflation front in coming reports as it makes up almost 4% of overall CPI report. And speaking of inflation, Mannheim used car index fell 2% in October and is down 4% year over year. This makes up 3.5% of core index, of core CPI index, and also will help inflation come down. We're going to get that Treasury auction here in uh, about an hour, give or take. And we're watching all the comments coming in from the Federal Reserve. A lot of them out speaking now that they had their meeting last week. They were quiet the week before. So they're out chatting right now. And again, as I mentioned to you, uh, Bowman, she thinks that we need to increase interest rates. Kashkari thinks we, thinks we need to, uh, we haven't solved the problem. So he thinks we might need to increase interest rates. And Powell doesn't know uh, what day of the week it is. Just throw that out there for you. That's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Maybe what we need to do is go to local governor, Todd Halterman. Maybe he could tell the Fed what they need to do. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. So... What do you, what is, what does the, uh, Halterman crystal ball say for interest rates? What do you, what do you think, or what's at least driving these things? Well, I mean, we're, we're looking at the velocity of money across America and the velocity of money is measured by when money leaves a bank and it goes out to a business or to consumer and it gets spent or paid to somebody else. How quickly does it make a full circle from going out till it comes back to that same financial institution. And generally money will change hands five times before it makes a complete circle of velocity. And with interest rates being aggressively high, like they've raised them, that's obviously slowed the lending uh, down a little bit because people are more reticent to borrow at current rates when they have old rates. So that slowed things down both from growing businesses, but also from buying and selling real estate We've seen the market not really retract, but flatten at this point from loan volumes. And when money slows down and growth slows down, things are people speculate. Um, when Goldman Sachs would generally make a hundred million dollar trade on Wall Street, uh, the market generally doesn't move. Uh, today, when we're seeing hundred million dollar trades from organizations like that, the market's bouncing all over the place because the volume is certainly down. Um, IPOs have slowed down. Mergers are starting to pick up where you're seeing larger companies and conglomerates picking up smaller conglomerates. So the component of interest rates rising has slowed down because inflation is working. Um, if you go to the grocery store, you're seeing consumers uh, purchases at the grocery store is 50 percent, if not higher than it was a year ago. Um, but in our opinion, um, when we're looking at the marketplace right now, interest rates will stay pretty steady where they're at right now. We do believe there will be one, if not two more bumps, um, if the corporate America and Wall Street continues to show big profits. And that's just to continue to keep things slow so banks can recapitalize while they're in this period of not having large reserves and people not cashing out old loans as fast as they were before. 
uh, until life gets in the way and people are forced to move and forced to change jobs uh, and things that force people to actually go out in the marketplace and um, get used to the new interest rates. So I think they're going to pump the rates uh, up a little bit or keep them the same for the first half of next year. And it looks to me like they'll use the interest rates to help get the economy moving again as the recession cycle moves through itself and things continue to be slow and they'll speed it back up. But let's remember, Ron, we've got an election year next year and Americans have short term memory loss. And I believe a lot of politicians hope that they forget the pain they caused the last three years. And then they're going to save our life next year by giving us more competitive rates. And then I think we'll see real estate values start to take off again, uh, especially in certain asset classes. But real estate is poised to grow. So if consumers are worried about whether to buy or right now, it's the time to get out and start looking to buy. Interesting. OK, so um, now it's, it's interesting that you're, the commentary that you've got there, because I've been sharing a little different thought, but along the same lines. So I'm going to throw this at you. California is already at a 4.6% uh, unemployment rate, even though, and that was before this last, the last BLS numbers. I haven't seen those, the, the newest California unemployment. But now we're up a, a half a percent over the lows on unemployment. And that generally indicates that we're heading toward a recession, which would, that would be contra to raising rates, wouldn't it be? Well, the labor market's slowing down, and that's that's really a sign of manufacturing getting more efficient. Um, we've seen that time and time again. But even at four and a half percent, we're not in a range of of what I would say he, having economic um, volatility. Uh, corporate America is still profitable, but the signs look to me like sector recovery is not a full blown recession um, because of the profits that we're still seeing. What is but, what is sector recovery, Todd? Well, that means that there's different sectors of the of, of the world. So you have industrials and manufacturing and consumer services at different areas of the global economy. But right now they've been recovering at different rates in different areas. So it hasn't been everything all at once. Um, I'm still not convinced we're going to have a full blown what we're used to as a full blown recession where we see a huge downturn in the market. There's still a tremendous amount of cash out there in corporate America and profits are really strong. So there's a lot of mixed signals right now. But if you're watching the interest rate market and the fixed income market, uh, the bond market has really started to stabilize. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of institutional money go back into fixed income in droves. Um, uh, there's there's some good risk free returns out there. So it's confusing, Ron. It's very confusing. And it's why we're using a lot of tools to help protect people's principal right now while we still guard the inflation growth. So I want to talk to you about the interest rate market when we come back. But before we go, before we go, I want to just throw this out there to you, because I hear this a lot on, on the news. I just had this conversation with an investor this morning. Why in the world would somebody invest in the stock market right now if they can go and, you know, go, go to something like um, the U.S. government and get four and a half percent on a 10 year treasury? Well, again, it goes back to risk profile and what kind of growth do you want to expect? But I look at areas of the world like aerospace and defense and cybersecurity and innovative technology and AI robotics. And if you close your eyes and open your eyes up 10 years from now, those industries are five times bigger than they are today. That's how you keep up with inflation. Makes a lot of sense. We're going to continue our conversation with Todd Halterman. When we come back, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events and the financial markets. Thinking about using your 401k to buy a home? We'll talk about it how a teenager can start to establish a credit history. And obviously, we love our veterans, so we're honoring our veterans all week this week. Todd Halterman is one of those veterans that we say thank you to. You can reach us anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 at facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel the number 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? 
Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you like many of your neighbors trying to figure out how to pay off your debts so you can retire someday? Build bigger savings. Invest in opportunities. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Debt will destroy 50% of Americans from being able to retire earlier and with more. What if you could have a guaranteed program that could show you how to eliminate all of your debt in 10 years or less, all without having to spend more each month than you spend right now? Yes, that's correct. All without spending more from your checkbook each month than you are today. Get your free analysis today to see if you qualify. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Log on today for your free analysis. rsrnodebt.com. No purchase necessary. The free analysis takes only two minutes. rsrnodebt.com. Ron Siegel Radio is your home and mortgage connection. Go to rsrnodebt.com rsrnodebt.com. Hey friends, do you dream of mortgage-free home ownership? Are you aware that even if you own your home free and clear, it could still be costing you thousands per year? The Siegel Lending Team can help you generate tax-free income, accumulate family wealth, and maintain ownership of your home. By simply emailing your most recent mortgage statement, you'll receive a no-obligation real estate plan. Learn more by calling 1-800-306-1990 or email me your recent mortgage statement to PEAR at ronsiegelradio.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, the real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by rsrmoney.com, rsrmoney.com. Think about using your 401k to buy a home? Are you, dreaming of buy- are you dreaming of buying your own home and wondering about how you'll save for a down payment? You're not alone. Some people think about tapping into their 401k savings to make it happen. But before you decide to dip into your retirement to buy a home, be sure to consider all possible alternatives and talk with a financial expert. Here's why. The numbers may make it tempting. The data shows many Americans have saved considerable amount for retirement. The average 401k balance by age, Gen Z, 7,100. Millennials, 44,9. Gen X, 145. Boomers, 215. And you are seeing that if you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv any of our socials with ABC News and Talk, AM 1490, FM 98.1 video feed, it can be really tempting when you have a lot of money saved up in your 401k and see your dream home on the horizon. But remember, dipping into your retirement savings for a home could cost you a penalty and affect your finances later on. That's why it's important to explore all your options when it comes to saving for a down payment and buying a home. As experience says, quote, it's possible to use funds from your 401k to buy a house, but whether you should Depends on several factors, including taxes and penalties, how much you've already saved, and your unique financial circumstances, unquote. Alternative ways to buy a home. Using your 401k is one way to finance a home, but it's not the only option. Before you decide, consider a couple of other methods. Courtesy of Experian. FHA loan. The FHA loan allows qualified buyers to put down as little as 3.5% of the home's price, depending upon their credit scores. Down payment assistance programs. Yes, Geneva has a proprietary one. There are many national and local programs that can help first-time and repeat homebuyers come up with the necessary down payment. Above all else, have a plan. No matter what route you take to purchase a home, 
Be sure to talk with a financial expert before you do anything. Working with a team of experts to develop a concrete plan prior to starting your journey to home ownership is the key to success. Kelly Palmer, founder, founder of The Wealthy Parents, says, quote, I have seen parents pausing contributions to their retirement plans in favor of affording a larger home often with the hope they can refinance in the future. As long as there is a tangible plan in place to get back to saving for their retirement goals, I encourage families to consider all their options, unquote. Bottom line, if you're still thinking about using a 401k retirement savings for a home down payment, consider all your options and work with a financial professional before making a decision. And I didn't even know about this one, that, that article we were doing that today, because I did mention earlier the Home Select program from our friends at Geneva Financial. Tap into that equity, but pay down the loan so much quicker. RSRHomeSelect.com, and it's something we've talked to Todd Haltman about many, many times, is about paying the principal down and using the amortization table to your benefit. That's the real-time real estate segment brought to you by RSRMoney.com, RSRMoney.com. Continue our conversation with Todd Halterman. He is uh, uh, one of our favorite veterans. Thank you for your service, my friend. Oh, thank you. Glad to have you with us, and uh, we're happy to honor you this week during uh, our Veteran Appreciation Celebration all week on Ron Siegel Radio. So I'm glad that you were able to, to join us, my friend. Me too. It was a great morning to do it. Yes, sir. So I want to chat with you. We were talking in the last segment about interest rates, and I noticed it from the Mortgage Bankers Association in their report that came out this morning that they're, they're talking about refinances rose 2% and now they're down 7% year over year. And the last year they were down about 80%. So, you know, going up, being down, uh, you know, being, you know, th those numbers, you know, they're still on top of some pretty bad numbers. But my question is, is there value or emotional value when people start saying, okay, mortgage rates are in this, you know, high sevens, low eights, and they've been there for about, you know, 60 days now there's not a whole lot of the fact that there's stability does that help in the interest rate world as much as it does in the stock market world well and you understand the interest rate policies in the last 15 to 20 years changed significantly due to quantitative easing so much like inflation uh, interest rate market is being used to help control the velocity of money and the expansion of business um, so if rates really what the fed is saying is that they they think they're going to keep rates and inflation fairly high for a while the inflation is to help inflate uh, obviously purchasing power and the cost of goods sold uh, you know coca-cola if they sell 20 billion dollars in soda pop uh, and they raise their prices and now they bring in 25 billion but they maintain their 20 percent profit spread their net profits are 20 percent larger just by economies of scale um, that's why you see the capital markets and the stock market, if you will, generally expand significantly after an inflationary cycle, um, after this shock of the inflationary cycle goes on. But when you have a shrinking labor force, which higher unemployment and higher cost of living and higher interest rates, life gets way more expensive for Americans and Americans lose confidence. So the interest rate game is being used to help slow down that money, to slow down the economy to stabilize itself so banks can catch up to all the lending they've done the last four or five years uh, and for the real estate market to build equity back up so consumers can have a balanced balance sheet. But let's be honest, Ron, this move is so the government can collect more taxes. If they don't sell any more goods and services than they did last year, prices are higher, taxes will be higher. That means it costs more for Americans to live so it helps the bottom line for them to balance their budgets or get caught up to the budget or they like to spend. But the interest rate market is a key indicator on how the government wants the economy to expand. So if we can see interest rates come back down, you'll see real estate markets take off. You'll see the bank markets take off. You'll see the stock market take off. So the tide will lift all boats. But right now, everybody's hanging up on interest rates because it's slowing life down. Well, but but doesn't that become a catch-22 then? Because if if they lower interest rates and everything that you just mentioned takes off, and I agree they 100% that they will if they lower interest rates, 
then doesn't that gonna gonna be the create more inflation? So the Fed's gonna come back in and say they want to um, start raising rates again. This is why they're gonna hold inflation uh, pretty steady where it's at right now, and we believe. Um, and the interest rates will be the measurement of uh, how money is going to move. And inflation being higher is actually a positive thing. Uh, frankly, um, consumers and Americans and even retirees are actually finally making some interest on their cash mm. where they haven't been able to make any interest on their cash for 10 to 14 years. So uh, it's nice to be able to hold money in treasuries or even in money market and make four to five percent. So it's not inflation is not bad. Combining it with high interest rates has made it difficult for sure, especially for people on a fixed income. Do you think we're going to have a, a big come to reality in the next, uh, I don't know, four to six weeks, you know, where people have, you know, their money's tighter. Gas prices have been high. Um, you know, we, we're seeing some people having trouble with uh, not a lot, but some more, more unemployment. Uh, but the items that the government doesn't monitor in their core CPI numbers okay. are right. high. And, you know, Thanksgiving is going to cost a lot more this year than it did in the past. Is that going to have an effect? It's going to be double. You go to the grocery store. I bought an apple yesterday for $1.81. A golden delicious apple for $1.81. There's no question consumers are having to figure out how to afford basic staples like gas and oil. Uh, food. Those are not counted in the core CPI. And that was during low interest rate environment is really how the government was helping to slow uh, uh, people's spending was by driving gas and oil higher, which raises the cost of food and groceries and consumable goods because it costs more to truck them to the stores. So there's a, there's a few manipulations going on in the world right now that's really causing the Americans to slow down their spending, using their credit cards, reducing their savings. And for that reason, uh, with global war and the threat of war and natural catastrophes happening more, there's a macroeconomic risk of the market having downturn uh, of 10% or so. And I think Americans need to be used to the fact that the market's going to move on them at any given time up to 20%. But 10% is almost a given at this point because the market expands and then it takes it back. The market expands and it takes it back. So for the next six to eight months, three quarters or so, we believe the market is going to hit resistance points. It's going to go up and hit a point and then come down and hit a point. And we're going to tread water with some what I'll call insignificant returns uh, for the risk people are taking. But that's why the bond market is looking so attractive right now. So I don't want to get into, I know we don't give any financial advice on Ron Siegel Radio. They can call you for that uh, individually. That way they can get the risk profiles and everything else that you need from a compliance standpoint. But just as a lay person, you know, I hear, you know, we're giving $100 billion to Ukraine and, you know, 15 or $20 billion to Israel. And, you know, we give this, all this to everybody from a sense. And I know many instances we're not giving the giving them money. We're giving them um, military items. It seems to me that just as a lay person, that sector should be a great sector to be investing in because the government's saying, you know, we're going to spend all this money there. Am I missing something? No, not at all. And when we sit down with folks and help them understand and have a relationship with their money, we really write job descriptions for people's money. And gosh, if you close your eyes and you look 10 years out, and you think about how different aerospace industry is today than it was 10 years ago, to, uh, how, how different the Department of Defense uh, does defense now through cyber attacks, uh, lasers, space, satellites, uh, even the planes and tanks are not manned with people anymore. They're drones. So I believe that people need to be aware of how to invest in specialty markets instead of buying the entire stock market itself. We need to look at industries that we have confidence in that's going to expand and to me, things like cybersecurity and aerospace and defense, uh, AI, robotics and technology, those industries look to grow by three times over, if not more, over the next 10 years, just based on the new world and how we do business today, uh, especially after COVID. Yeah, it's pretty amazing watching some of these things. And I've been watching, you know, I watch some stocks and again, we're not going to give any advice, but you, know, you look at a company like Microsoft and, and Apple. Well, Apple's been doing the same thing over and over again. They just keep coming up with another version of an iPhone for somebody to spend a couple thousand dollars on. And Apple, as you mentioned, with all of their AI stuff, I'm sorry, yeah, Microsoft with all their AI stuff, 
they're not they're pretty close to an all-time high on their stock prices so you got to wonder you know, which way do you want to go even though apple's been such a great stock for so long but again you got to have a a plan there and i'm going to recommend that you know something unless you're doing this full time and i wouldn't consider that i don't i don't do it full time you got to call and talk to somebody that is doing it full time and and as todd mentions over and over again he's got the support of a lot of people that are are feeding information to him that the average individual doesn't and no matter what we say any information that we get is biased right as a lay person where do I go to get information? I'll watch CNN. I'll watch Fox News. I'll go to Bloomberg. I'll go to BBC. I'll go to local local stations. And I know every one of those has a bias. You got to hope that some of the financial analysts are just looking at the numbers and the business and, and feeding information to the professionals like Todd um, from an unbiased standpoint, not from a, a Democrat lens or a Republican lens or any of those things. So Make sure you're taking care of your family that way. It's really, really important. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back more with Todd Halterman, how a teenager can start to establish a credit history and more, reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage connection. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you like many of your neighbors trying to figure out how to pay off your debts so you could retire someday? Build bigger savings. Invest in opportunities. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Debt will destroy 50% of Americans from being able to retire earlier and with more. What if you could have a guaranteed program that could show you how to eliminate all of your debt in 10 years or less, all without having to spend more each month than you spend right now? Yes, that's correct all without spending more from your checkbook each month than you are today. Get your free analysis today to see if you qualify. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Log on today for your free analysis, rsrnodebt.com. No purchase necessary. The free analysis takes only two minutes, rsrnodebt.com. Ron Siegel Radio is your home and mortgage connection. Go to rsrnodebt.com rsrnodebt.com Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com that's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Hey friends, do you dream of mortgage-free home ownership? Are you aware that even if you own your home free and clear, it could still be costing you thousands per year? The Siegel Lending Team can help you generate tax-free income, accumulate family wealth, and maintain ownership of your home. By simply emailing your most recent mortgage statement, you'll receive a no-obligation real estate plan. Learn more by calling 1-800-306-1990 or email me your recent mortgage statement to PEAR at ronsegalradio.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. At 800 306 1990, 800 306 1990, the Your Credit Matters segment today. 
being brought to you by creditsanitizer.com. You have a credit report and it's wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has these solutions. How a teenager can start to establish a credit history. As a parent, you work hard to prepare your child for the future in many ways. One way to set your child up for success later in life is to teach them about the importance of building good credit. Better yet, you could consider starting the process early by helping your teenager establish credit history while they're still young. Building good credit history as a teenager could make it easier for your son or daughter to rent their first apartment, purchase a vehicle, open a credit card, or qualify for loans when they're ready. A well-established credit history might also lead to other perks, like the opportunity to save money on utility deposits, mobile phone contracts, and even car insurance. While building credit from scratch, however, it's important to approach the process the right way. Otherwise, you risk running into problems you could otherwise avoid. And if you're trying to help a teenager establish credit history for the first time, the process might be a bit more complex than usual due to their age. Nonetheless, building credit as a teen is possible. Here's what you need to know. How old do you need to be to establish credit? You don't need to be a certain age to begin establishing credit history. With one or more of the major credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian, yet before a person can legally open an account in their name, they must be at least 18 years old. Additionally, if minors have established credit reports, the credit reporting agencies restrict access to them in an effort to prevent child identity theft. To check the credit report of a minor, a parent must fill out a form requesting the report and send in documentation verifying their identity and relationship to the child, like a driver's license, minor's birth certificate, social security card, all that. It's also important to note that just because a teenager established credit history doesn't automatically make them eligible for a FICO score. Before a FICO score can be generated, their credit report must satisfy the following criteria. The credit report has at least one account that's been open for six months or more. The credit report has at least one account that's been reported to the credit bureau in the last six months. No indication of deceased on the file. A single trade line or multiple trade lines can satisfy both conditions above. How to build credit as a teenager. Establishing your credit history as a teenager can be complicated for multiple reasons. Yet there are a few ways you can begin building credit even before your 18th birthday. Number one, credit building products for teens. As mentioned, you need to be 18 or older to legally open a credit account in, on your own. But there are several credit building products available online for teenagers that can help you start establishing credit at a younger age. Depending upon the service, a company may begin tracking your teen's financial habits through a savings instead of a borrowing relationship. Then once your teenager turns 18, he or she may be able to opt in to share any previously established credit history with the major credit bureaus. Number two, authorized user. Another solution that might help your teenager establish credit is becoming an authorized user. When you add your teen to an existing credit card, the card issuer may report the activity for the account to the credit bureau for both you, the primary holder, and your child, the authorized user. If the credit card does show up on your teenager's credit report, the way you manage the account will determine the impact it has on your son or daughter's credit history being an authorized user on a credit card with late payments and high utilization could damage their credit. Number three, a secured credit card and student credit cards. Once your teenager turns 18, they may be old enough to open other forms of credit. At that point, they'll need to find lenders that are willing to approve them for financing based on their existing credit history, income, and other factors. Secured credit cards might be the solution here. It's also important to note that credit Card Act of 2009 states you must have sufficient independent source of income to open an account on your own until you're age 21. Otherwise, you'll need to add a co-signer to the credit card application. Bottom line, no matter how you decide to help your teenager establish credit history, it's important to teach good credit management. That is Your Credit Matters brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has the solution for you. Continuing our conversation, Todd Halterman is with us this morning chatting about the markets, where money's going. Um, we're talking about interest rates. They're going up. They're going down. Todd's firm seems to believe they might go up another time or two. Todd, do you have any idea when that might be? Are you talking early next year, late next year? What's your time right? You know, it, it's it's really predicated upon consumer confidence in the capital markets. The, the Fed has said we're likely to hold rates for a while. Um, we They want to bump it up 
one or two more times, but because the employment and labor numbers, as you mentioned in the last segment, and unemployment's going up. So they've slowed down uh, raising that interest rate, allowing the oil and gas markets, the food markets, the things that aren't measured with core inflation, um, allowing the employment and labor statistics to finish the year out. Uh, the economy, the, the, the government also wants to see how consumer spending handles through the holiday season. As you know, year end, they watch big time what consumer confidence looks like on how much they spend on the holidays. So there's just a lot of things to change. Um, if, if we're looking from a 30,000 foot view, it looks to us like we should see one more bump in interest rates sometime in the first quarter of next year. Uh, we don't really see that economists think there's going to be two of them. But if things heated up for some reason and the markets start taking off, it wouldn't surprise me to see one, if not two, raises in that first quarter, second quarter of next year. Um, we think inflation is going to stay right where it's at. Um, I think oil and gas is going to stay right in the neighborhood that it's at, going up a bit, going down a bit, um, especially through the winter when consumption goes way up from heating bills. Um, and then the second half of the year, it's, uh, it looks to me like towards the end of next year, we should see mortgage rates come down a little bit to help stimulate lending in the economy and banks and capitalization there. Uh, and we should see the Fed rate come down just a little bit. Um, but we don't see a real aggressive moves. We think that a fair mortgage rate is going to be in that six and a half percent range um, once they stabilize interest rates um, after the election. But these are all guesses um, based on economic uh, input from some of the large, the best economists that we follow. Um, and these are just estimates. And we guess that the marketplace could look uh, more stable from an interest rate and inflation market in 2025. So let me ask you this, based on what your your estimates there are, is there any historic um, uh, value to, to or do you not have knowledge of, of what's happened historically in, in you know in interest rate environment? Do you think the Fed would really uh, increase interest rates going into a presidential election? Well, if their if their goal was to slow velocity of money down and keep the markets from taking off too much uh, because of the high inflation, um, that's where the Fed is just not really showing their hand. There's a lot of factors going into their um, decision to sound indecisive, but I, I think it's really to try to keep consumer confidence low uh, and to keep it vague. So the, the markets don't take off too much because I don't think they really want to. But frankly, if they need to, uh, it's not a bad thing short term. Uh, long term, uh, we all know that they want voters to go to the poll with confidence. But if they do a shock to the interest rate market and then they bring uh, rates down by a half a percent, even right prior to election, uh, you and I both know what that does for the velocity of money and lending uh, and we'll see a lot of activity going into the end of the year. So it's it's very plausible that we're going to see it stay the same or maybe one raise, but it's very, very plausible. Uh, and I think very possible that we'll see a little bit of rate relief going into the end of the year. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me because I can't I can't imagine, you know, they don't they they seem to be wanting to stay completely out of anything to do with the um, fiscal side. Right. I mean, because they won't even come out and say that all this spending that the government's doing is what helps cause inflation. So I can't imagine why they're going to get involved in wanting to um, influence an election by either going up or going down. So it seems like we may be in a uh, a stagnant rate and rate environment until you know this time next year after the elections. I, I don't disagree with you. And it's 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 really we call it range bound. We think the, the capital markets, the income markets, the financial markets, we think they're going to be range bound for uh, the next three to four quarters, which means they'll peak and trough in between two certain points. Um, and it's been a stock pickers market this last year. It hasn't been, you know, an overall uh, bullish run. The market's expanded and it's retracted the last two months. Um, so the, your average index investors are getting anywhere from two to four percent returns, but they're taking 20 percent risk to do it. Um, so it's been good to hang on to cash. And, you know, a lady can't buy things on sale, Ron, if she doesn't have cash in her pocket. And I just saw this morning that the uh, credit card debt is way up there also. So. Might be starting to max out those credit cards and can't use the house as a credit card right now. So 
it may be an interesting uh, next uh, you know six to twelve months. We'll see what happens. But I appreciate you, Todd. I appreciate you coming on and kind of set, shedding some light. Maybe help us understand what's going on in this world. And as always, I want to say thank you again uh, for your service to our country. Uh, we couldn't do shows like this if it wasn't for the men and women that go out there and, and uh, fight for our country. So thank you yeah. for your service and for the uh, rest of the men and women this week as we honor all of our veterans. And as always, we ask, set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Josh and Sean who are engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. Things were gone, work for all my life.